that power play thing, like you mentioned, Marner playing that bumper role. How do you see that? Like, I mean, obviously the power play was absolute trash last year after the early point in the season where it seemed like we were scoring every second opportunity, but just like quick visuals of like Marner in that role. And you mentioned that Braden point is known for playing in that role and excel and being amazing in that role. Like, how do you see Marner there? You know what, Lepore? I I love that you brought this up because I don't really like it. Me neither. The the idea of it, and and here's and here's how I look at it. So Braden Point, when he plays that spot for the Tampa Bay Lightning, and if you've watched the Lightning player, you've seen highlights with them whipping the puck around on the power play. Point, I think, has a much better shot and release exactly. than, than Mitch Marner. Exactly. And I think the guy that's going to play that bumper role in the middle of the ice and has to get off those quick one-timers. Now, listen, Mitch Marner, he can make plays in tight, in you know congested spaces. He can stick handle in a phone booth. We know that. But in terms of his release and his ability to shoot the puck, I don't yeah. think it's a great fit for that spot on the power play. Yeah, I thought the exact the, the, again. How I said, like quick visual. The reason why it's so dangerous with point is because he can re- redistribute it, or his shot is a threat. Like with Marner getting that quick, I'm like, nah, I don't know that that's really a threat. The guy I see there is Tavares. Exactly. Yeah. If, exactly. If I was gonna that's see who like, should be playing that spot. Like p- people were saying, Matthews. Like, no, no, no. You need Matthews on the outside shooting it. But uh, no, as far as Marner goes, like. I don't know. I don't. I, I don't see it. But what do you, w- w- could Willie do it? Will you? Yes, Nylander, I think would be a better fit than Marner. But what mm. I was just gonna say is I don't know why the Leafs don't just have Matthews and Nylander set up. I mean, usually on the half wall. I mean, if you look at some of the the best power plays, like you have like Nick Nicholas Backstrom on the half wall, or Patrick right. Kane, and even Mitch Marner for that for that matter. But if if the Leafs can have, you know, Matthews on one side, Nylander on the other side, just ripping pucks, because I think those two guys have the two best shots of all the, the elite guys on the team. I mean, you could add Tavares in that, but just in terms of like shots from the perimeter or one timers from, for that matter, among the forward group, those are the two best guys, right? So yeah. I would like to see Nylander get more of an opportunity in a shooting position on the power play, which I think for whatever reason the Leafs have just I don't know neglected over the last number of years so that's what I would like to see yeah it'd be interesting too to see how they work it up top with Sandine how they like to play Sandine in the middle high and like what they do with Riley and whoever else they put on the power play or if they want to use um the Muzzin thing for the big shot but it's going to be a talking point because it deserves to be a talking point because as great as the regular season was last year like that was the thing that was it was embarrassing like it got to the point where like they had no confidence. They couldn't even snap the puck around, like not even creating scoring chances. I remember there was games watching, they couldn't even get the puck in. And again, I'm sure that, that has a lot to do with like frustration. But I mean, Spencer Carberry, he's got uh he's got maybe one of the toughest jobs in terms of microscopes in the NHL this year. They brought it from those who don't know him, he's brought in from the Hershey Bears. He won the AHL coach of the year and now hired with the Leafs to be an assistant coach and run the power play. He's got to figure it out, man. All eyes on. And thing is with the power play too, like as much as say, like we're underlying numbers, guys. No, the power play is just about your percentage. Like, like I don't care how many chances and shots you're getting. It's about execution and an end result. So it's about a final number. And I'm like, I'll ask you as a big Leafs fan and like a guy who knows this lineup really well. What's a fair, like, What's a fair ranking? Like, where, where should the Leafs be in the league? Like, if you look at the talent, the guys they have on their power play, like, what I'll say, what number is, like, would represent a number that if it's below that, it's unacceptable? Anything below 20% on the power play is unacceptable. And I think anything below being really top eight in the league. Yeah, like eight to 10. With the personnel in place on this team, this team should be a, no doubt about it, top eight power play in the yeah. NHL. Yeah. Like there's, there's no excuse when you look across the league and you see, you know, for example, Edmonton, and I know McDavid and dry are, you know, two of the top five players in the world, but that team for the last couple of seasons has essentially been one of the, the top two power plays. I think they actually ranked number one over the last two seasons, just based yeah. on power play percentage. They're, they're operating at around a 30% clip. 
And you know what? When going back to last season, at the beginning of the year, the Leafs power play, you know, we're all just scarred by what we saw at the end of the season. But at the beginning of last season, the Leafs power play was very good. It was like in the 30s at one point. Yeah. It was like in the mid-30s. They were scoring like every game, bang, bang. They were scoring power play goals. The Leafs had the number one power play in the league for a little bit, and then they were kind of top three, top five, and then it just fell off a cliff. Yeah, it's, it was like every game would go down like one or two points till it was like an average power play overall. Exactly. But, yeah, I, going back to your question, Lapore, like I said, if they're not a top eight power play in the league operating between 20 and 25%, I think that's a disappointment considering the personnel in place. Yeah, I would agree. Like, like I said, like top 10, I was in like top third of the league. Like you got to be in the top third of the league. Just again, based on talent, they, you've, you have right off the bat, you have a first team all-star in Mitch Marner, a second team all-star in Austin Matthews, who would be a first team all-star. I mean, if Connor McDavid wasn't Connor McDavid, and then you have Tavares and Nylander. And that's just, that's just the strength up front. Like you have to score guys. Come on. Like you have to score and think, man, like the Leafs are a good team. If you add that element of like a high end lethal power play, it's like, we talk about these things to get the Leafs to the next step. That could be it. Like a top power play in the league. I mean, you need to do it. Like, especially in the regular season, it's going to be a tough regular season in our division. And like little details like that could, could go a long way as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, if you can add that extra weapon and be one of the top power plays in the league, it just makes life so much easier. And, you know, scoring at five on five is obviously very important. And that usually shows who the best teams are. It separates the boys from the men, so to speak, you know, when you're an elite five on five scoring team. But I even go back to last year's playoffs, the Tampa Bay Lightning for the first two to three rounds were just unbelievable on the power play. Yeah. It wasn't like, fair. <laughs> like their power play essentially like got them through to the, to the semifinals last year. I mean, obviously that team all around was unbelievable elite across the board, but that power play was operating at, I believe over 30%. It was like 35% at one point in the yeah. playoffs. So if the Leafs can add that on top of their ability to score at five on five, then we can definitely see this team take it to the next level now that remains to be seen this team has so much to prove when it comes to performing in the playoffs but yes that power play is huge and and another thing with the power play lapore is also who's gonna who's gonna be the guy on the point yeah is it gonna be riley is it gonna be sandine i don't think that's been decided yet either like i said carby's got a lot of work to do and i'm sure people listening are thinking like well any team can say if our power play was elite no no but the leafs have the talent like that that's the difference like we're criticizing them saying our expectations are far higher than what we've been shown on the ice so yeah like i don't i don't think it's it's a hot take to say this team should have an elite power play like one of the best power plays in the league yeah so that's definitely going to be something to keep our eye on especially over these next few preseason games how does the power play look because even in that first game John Tavares scored on the Leafs first power play of the preseason so yeah. that was positive but then going back to this last preseason game on Monday against the Habs the power play did not look good so once the the full roster actually gets into a game here and maybe we can see that new look power play and and how it's operating and Spencer Carberry's vision for that but that's definitely going to be an area of interest for all Leaf fans leading up to the start of the season.